السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ جو ہر میں سونڈ از کلیئر اوکے گڈ So I am Dr. Rudwan As-Sadaq Al-Gurmazi, Assistant Professor at this UGDA branch. And uh, I am happy to be one of your instructors. So for this term, uh, I will be the, the teacher of the course IT-230 Web Technologies. So, uh, In the end of uh, this course, each student uh, must be able to analyze the web page and identify its elements and attributes, uh, also to create static web pages using XHTML and CSS, to build dynamic web pages using JavaScript, and here JavaScript is a client-side programming, and to build web applications using Java servlets, GSP, and PHP. Also, to construct and manipulate web databases, and to create XML documents. So, we will uh, see or learn all or the majority of web technologies. Okay? Good. So let's begin with the first chapter, chapter number one, Web Essentials Clients, Servers, and Communication. The Internet, so the technical origin of Internet is ARPNET. ARPNET is the abbreviation of Advanced Research Project Agency Network. So one of the earliest attempts to network heterogeneous geographically dispersed computers And ARPNET access was limited to select Department of Defense funded organizations. After that, there are many open access networks like CSNet, the abbreviation of Computer Science Network, And the National Science Foundation Network is the primary purpose to connect supercomputer centers and to provide backbone to connect regional networks. So, can you give me a definition for Internet? What is Internet? Definition for Internet. Yes, it is a network. Yes, good. Good. It is a network of networks. So the Internet is the network of networks. And how these networks can communicate? Have you an idea? How these networks can communicate? Using what?
yes, good protocol. So the protocols used to communicate are TCP IP. And TCP IP are two protocols. Okay? So Internet is the network of networks connected via the public backbone and communicating using TCP IP communication protocol. So communication protocol that means how computers talk. For example, if we talk about telephone protocol, how you answer and, and call, what language you speak, etc. So internet protocols developed as a part of ARPNET research. And ARPNET began using TCP IP in 1982. And the internet protocol designed for use both within local area networks and between networks. So IP is uh, okay. I cannot make a record for this session. I don't know what. Why? Normally, it is okay for recording. So, IP. Uh, stands for Internet Protocol, is the fundamental protocol defining the Internet as the name implies. So IP address, 32-bit number. Why? Why there are 32? So this is is an example this is, is an example of uh, an IP address good very good so each part this is the first one yes first one second part third and fourth so each part is from 0 to 255, so 8-bit. So if we multiply 8 by 4, we will find 32-bit. So IP address associated with at most one device at a time and written as four dot separated bytes. Any questions? Good. So what is the function of IP? The function of Internet Protocol. Have you an idea about the function of IP? So IP function is to transfer data from a source device to destination device. We have source here. device and here we have destination and IP will transfer data from 
uh, source device to destination device. So IP source software create a packet representing the data and this packet contains two parts, a header and a data. So the header is represent the source and destination IP addresses, the length of data, etc., and the data itself. So if the destination is uh, on another LAN, the packet is sent to a gateway that connects to more than one network. So what's the meaning of a gateway? What is a gateway? No, it is not a big network. So a gateway, yes, is a node of a network that serves as an entrance to another network. I repeat, a gateway is a node of a network that serves as an entrance to another network. Okay? So this is, is an example of a gateway. It represents the entrance to network number two and it belongs to network number one. Yes, like a link. Good. This is, is another example of uh, a gateway. So if we want to send a data from this source to this destination, this data will be sent to the first gateway, after that for the second gateway, after that for the destination. Good. Uh, have you an idea about the disadvantages of IP? What are the disadvantages of IP? No, disadvantages. The inconvenience. Very good. So, the, maybe the packet will not uh, arrive. That means there is no guarantee of packet delivery. And the communication is one way. One way. So, the limitation of IP, no guarantee of packet delivery and the communication is uh, one way. There are two limitations of uh, IP. The first one, no guarantee of packet delivery, and the second one, the communication is one way. So for this reason, we will use TCP. So TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. And the TCP adds concept of a connection. So TCP adds the concept of connection on top of uh, IP. So the TCP provides guarantee that packets delivered and also provide two-way communication, full du duplex. So what's the meaning of full duplex? Full duplex. Two ways, yes. That means two machines can send message one to another at the same time. So full du duplex, that means two machines can send messages one to another at the same time. Very good. So this is, is an example 
we will uh, establish connection. Can I talk to you from source to destination? The destination say, okay, can I talk to you? Okay, so in this case, the connection is established. After that, the source can send bucket, bucket, sorry, with acknowledgement. So the source send, here is a packet, the destination send, got it. This is, is the uh, acknowledgement of this packet. So also, with TCP, we can resend packet packet, sorry. So we can resend packet if there is no uh, acknowledgement. So here is a packet. So the destination don't send the acknowledgement. Here is a recent packet. After that, the destination send the acknowledgement. Any questions? Okay. So also the TCP adds concept of a par. Have you an idea about par? Par. Par. So, in the same machine, we can find many applications. Okay, for example, we can find uh, a mail server and an application server and a database server, etc. So, in this, if this machine receives a message, it has to know if this message has been sent to the first application, or to the second application, or to the third application, etc. So, using this part, the TCP can know what is the application, the first one, or the second one, or the third one. So, the part indicate this message for the first application, or the second one, or the third one in this machine. It's clear. So TCP header contains part number representing an application program on the destination computer. And some uh, port numbers have standard meanings. For example, port 25 is normally used for email transmitted using the simple mail transfer protocol. And other port numbers are available. So first come, first serve it to any application. So this is, is an example of using PAR. We have two hosts, two machines, A and B. And here we have a mail server. And here we have a mail client. So the mail server mm, in this uh, um, uh, machine, in host A, asks TCP here to listen for request to port 25. Listen to request for request to port 25. After that, when the host B sends a message here, so host B sends data. After that, TCP25 plus data. So TCP25, that means here, TCP header containing 25 as the port number. After that, an IP message is received. This is, is the IP message is received by the host A. 
after that this message will be transmitted to TCP after that this message will be transmitted to mail server why because here we use 25 as a par the same par number so this is, is an indication that this message is for the mail server not for example for if we have here database server this message cannot be sent to the database server why because we use 25 as a power number not 30 3306 as a power number it's clear for you what's the meaning of the power Let's move to UDP, UDP user datagram protocol. So like TCP with an IP and provides port concept, but is unlike TCP, no connection concept and no transmission guarantee. The advantage is uh, is so faster for one time messages. Have you an idea about DNS? DNS. No. Not like Skype. DNS. So DNS stands for what? Ah, okay, yes. Sorry. Like Skype. Yes, good. So DNS, Domain Name Service, is the phone book for the Internet. Yes, map between host names and IP addresses. So DNS often uses UDP for communication. Good. So we can use NSLOOKUP program this command provides command lines access to DNS so there are many protocols with on TCP for example SMTP for email FTP for file transfer, HTTP for transfer of web documents, etc. Any questions? So let's move now to the web. Can I say that Internet is web? or internet and web are similar yes or no what is the difference between web and internet no internet big network yes and the web what is web so internet is not a kind of web okay so web is one of several systems for organizing internet based information that means the web is a way for accessing information over the medium of internet so the internet represents the network and to access to make access or to access 
to the information in this network we will use the web so the web is a way of accessing information over the medium of uh, internet okay so there are many other uh, systems like Waze, Gopher, Hershey, etc. But the distinctive feature of web, web support for hypertext, that means text containing links. And the communication of the web is via hypertext transport protocol and the document representation using hypertext markup languages language sorry it's clear the difference between web and internet so web is the way of accessing information over the internet Any questions? So the web is the collection of machines, web servers, on the internet that provide information, particularly HTML documents via HTTP. So machines that access information on the web are known as web clients. So, web client is a machine that access information on the web. And web browser is, is the software used by an end user to access the web. Okay? I repeat, web client is the machine that accesses information on the web. And the web browser is a software. So web client machine. And web browser is a software. Can you give me an example of a web browser? Example of a web browser. Good. So, Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome or Internet Explorer are uh, web browsers. Hypertext Transport Protocol (HTTP). So, HTTP is based on the Request Response Communication model. So request response communication model that means the client sends a request the server sends a response okay and http is a stateless protocol what's the meaning of stateless stateless protocol why HTTP is a stateless protocol so when the client sends a request the server sends a response and after that the server closes the connection yes so the protocol does not require the server to remember anything about the client between requests. That means the client, when we send the first request, the server sends the response and after that the, the server closes the connection. And when the client sends the second request, 
the server also sends a response and close the connection. So for every interaction, the server closes the connection between the client and the server. For this reason, we, we say that HTTP is a stateless protocol. Any questions? Good. So, HTTP is normally implemented over a TCP connection. And the typical browser server interaction, so the user enters web address in browser. And after that, the browser uses DNS to locate IP address. And after that, the browser opens TCP connection to the server, sends HTTP request over connection. So the server uh, sends HTTP response to the browser over the connection. And the browser displays body of the response in the client area. Good. So, if, for example, the DNS is not operational, can a web browser load an HTML document from a web server running on a different host? Yes or no? I repeat my question. We suppose that here the DNS is not operational. So can a web browser load an HTML document from a web server running on a different host? Yes or no? No? So for example, I will write www.google.com. But if DNS is not operational, we can write 192.168, the IP address. So the, res the response is yes by tapping IP address, not the host name. It's clear. So if the DNS is not operational, we can write the IP address of uh, of uh, the the host of the web server and not the host name. So we can use Telnet to simulate. So Telnet to make simulation of a browser request and view the server response. So if we write telnet www.example.org at, after that we can send a request here and receive a response. So telnet can uh, offer us a simulation of a browser request and response. Let's move now to HTTP request. So we have here a client and a server. So the client sent to the server an HTTP request and the server sends to the client an HTTP response. Okay, so we will discuss in this slide the structure of the request, the structure of HTTP request. So the structure of HTTP request is start line, header fields, 
black li blank line and after that optional body. It's clear. Any questions? Okay, so for start line, let's begin with the start line. This is, is an example of a start line. This is, is an example of a start line of an HTTP request. So in this example, there are three space separated parts. This is, is the first part. It represents HTTP request method. In our case, is the method get. This is, is the second part. It represents the request URI. And this one is the third part. It represents the HTTP version. So keep in the mind that the start line of an HTTP request is composed by three parts. The HTTP request method, the request URI, and the HTTP version. So the HTTP version we will cover 1.1 .1 in our uh, case in which version part of start line must be exactly as shown. For the request URE, so URE is the abbreviation of Uniform Resource Identifier. So this is, is an example of uh, URE. HTTP www.example.com is an example of URI. So the syntax of URI is HTTP after that www.example.org. The request URI is the portion of the requested URI that follows the host name, which is supplied by the required host header field. So in our example, in green here, the, here in our example, this is in green, this is, is the host name. www.example.org and in blue, in blue, this part, represents the request URI. So the request URI is the portion of the requested URI that follows the host name. This is, is our host name. Okay. It's clear. Any questions? It's clear for you? Okay. So there are two types of URI. The uniform resource name, URN, can be used to identify resources with unique names, such as books. And uniform resource locator, specifies location at which the resource can be found. So keep in the mind that there are two types of URE, URN and URL.
let's move now to HTTP request method. So the common request methods are get, post, and hit. Get used if links is clicked. So if we have a link here, for example, A is a link, and we click this link to move to this web page, this is, is a get request. Or if we type address typed in browser, so if we we, uh, we we type our address in the browser, this is also is a get method. The post used when submit button is clicked on a form. So form information contained in body of uh, request. But in the get, no body in request with get method. And for hit requests that only header fields be returned in the response. So can you give, uh, give me the or explain me the difference between get and post method? What is the difference between get and post method? I repeat my question. What is the difference between get and post method? Uh, okay. So, uh, we will talk about uh, get and post method uh, in chapter uh, two when we we will learn XHTML. But just for you. If we have here a web browser and we write HTTP www.example.org, this is, is a get method. Get this request, use a get method. Also, if we have a link and we click on this link, this is also is a get method. After that, if we have a form, E, for example, B and C, and after that we click into OK. This is can be get method and or post method. It depends here on the when we write form. We must specify if the method is get or post. It depends of this uh, value the attribute method in the form tag. Yes, but we also we can submit a page using a get method. So the difference between submitting a form using get or post, this is, is the difference. So in the first one when we use get, get The request will be like this, HTTP www.example.org and after that A equal 5 and B equal 6, etc. But in the post, we will find HTTP www.example.org that org, but without attributes a equal 5 and b equal 6. So the difference between get and post, here in the get, nobody in the request. Nobody. 
but in the past the information contained in the body of the request. This is, is the difference. Yes, POST is more secure. Yes. So if you want, I, I will get, this is, is an example of GET request and POST request. Okay? So in this example, our page is search.gsp. After that here, we will find all the attributes here. And nobody. Here, no body. But in this example, in, in the example of post, this information will be in the body. This is, is the body of post. It's clear now for you the difference between get and post. So in the get, all the information will be transmitted with the URL. And in the post, the information will be transmitted in the body of the request, not in the URL. It's clear? Good. We will continue with this chapter in the next uh, next session, insha'Allah. بالنسبة للوقت Are you uh, okay to maintain this uh, this time? Yes or no? مناسب جدا good for me uh, you have class now Layla Yes, it is possible to make it from 6 to 7. 7 to 8 now, I, I have a lecture. So, six to seven. It's okay for you. Okay, okay. لازم ني وقت يعني كيف حنقرر الحين. Seven to eight, I cannot because I have a lecture. And the Muhadra in Sabah Samania. The مشكل إنه في مين ما ما بيقدر. I cannot from eight to nine also. من ثلاثة الأربعة ممكن طيب إيش إيش الحل من 
خمسة لستة زي ما هي same time بس أسمى تقول إن عندها class الاثنين هشوف طيب انا اعطيكم المقترحات الاثنين في من ثلاثة الاربعة الاثنين في من ثلاثة الأربعة ثلاثة الأربعة أو من سبعة ثمانية طيب ثلاثة الأربعة ما ما بنقدر طيب الأحد أفضل، أوكي. الأحد أقدر من من ثلاثة الأربعة من ثلاثة حتى الخمسة. حتى السبعة. أربعة خمسة خمسة ستة ستة سبعة من ثلاثة لسبعة الأحد أنا موز... يعني أقدر إني الحصة تكون من ثلاثة حتى لسبعة يعني اختاروا الحصة اللي تقدروا إنكم تكونوا فيها موجودين خليها زي ما احنا يوم الاحد من سبعة ستة عنا كلاس من خمسة اربعة عنا كلاس طيب انا حبعث ايميل اوكي انا حبعث ايميل وانتظر اجابتكم اليوم ان شاء الله لانه لاني انا عندي محاضرة الحين لازم اروح جاست مومنت بليز اخذ الاتندنس لازم يتحاوروا مع الرياض يعني لانه انا حشوف المشكل هذا مع الدكتور حبيب طيب مو مشكل يعني بالنسبة للاتندنس هذا حضر جميع الطالبات ما عندي مشكل يعني مو مشكل بالنسبة لي بس المشكل في ال في الوقت لازم يعني نجد وقت مناسب للجميع طيب أنا مضطر إني أغادر الحين 
شكرا لحضوركم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته